that wonderful? The fantastic play of light and shade, isn't it? Devon. For many, a place to find peace and solitude. For others, like the Tucker family, it's been a working landscape for generations. The Tucker's farm lies about four and a half miles from the northern edge of the protected landscape of Dartmoor National Park. Seven years ago in 2004, a renewable energy company approached Martin Tucker about building part of a wind farm on his land. Business opportunities coming along to diversify. You know, we're going to grab it with both hands. And then you go over the The project manager is Rachel Ruffle of Developers Renewable Energy Systems, or RES. The Denbrook wind farm, with its 10 100-metre high turbines, will be built in a shallow valley that's part of Martin's farm. For genuine, I call it local people that would know us, are for it. But the trouble is, the ones that are for it won't say nothing about it. And the ones that are against it always got a lot to say. This is the story of what happens when the attempt to build a wind farm turns into an epic seven-year battle. Oh, can you believe it? There are a lot of nimbies, in my opinion. So who'd like one of these in their garden? They trespassed as well, but they trespassed at the piles as well. They had a right of go at this. Obviously done with a pair of wire cutters. It's a story of one woman's dream. I don't want people to be against it. I want everyone to love wind farms and they're not to be protesters. And what happens when that dream falls I've, apart? I've just got to try and pull my head together. No more going to become a kid. It's about the biggest dilemma facing the modern world. We've got serious global warming issue going on at the moment. And if we don't do something about it, we are going to leave a dreadful legacy for the next generation. They're nicking our tranquility. They're stealing. It's highway robbery. It leads to two public inquiries and a damaging and costly confrontation at the High Court. I'm sorry, this it gets me that badly, this. There's 3,000 years of continuous human settlement in that valley, and after which, it's as beautiful as it is today. This is how our battle for the future of the planet is played out in one Devon Valley. We're having lamb chops from Barry the Butchers, locally produce land. Rachel Ruffle's home is just a few miles away from where she is planning to build the wind farm. She lives with her partner Steve and their two young children. Yeah. What we want to do is try and get the facts across. And just, you know, this is a proposal, this is what it's about, these are the turbines, this is where they're going to go, this is the effect it's going to have, or the, the lack of effect it's going to have, this is how much energy it's going to produce, this is how turbines work, this is how much, how noisy they'll be, all those things. You know, if people want a greener Britain, they're not going to do it by stopping renewable energy projects. Quiet, 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 Billy. Billy, quiet. Martin Tucker's grandfather bought the farm near Den Brook in the 1920s. Martin now farms it with his son. But it's not always been easy. Several years ago, the neighboring farm contracted foot and mouth disease. All Martin's livestock had to be culled. So they built a pyre and burnt them, which was not good. The silence was the worst of it, this complete silence. I could never believe I wouldn't want to go and see stock or want to farm, you know. I've never been here all my life. I never thought you could feel that. But it, it did, it did. Eventually, Martin restocked. But when Rachel approached him about the wind farm, it was his chance for a new future. Her company, Res, got permission to put up the anemometer mast to collect wind speed data and check if the site is windy enough. Rachel's task now is to get planning permission for the whole wind farm. 
Res claim it will provide enough electricity for up to 13,000 homes. But Martin and Rachel are going to face some tough opposition. The developers led us to believe, we don't obviously know as yet because the application hasn't gone in. In a field close by Tucker's farm, protesters called the Denbrook Valley Action Group are about to publicize their campaign. They want to draw attention to how high the turbines will be by launching a balloon as close as possible to Tucker's farm. But one of the group has reservations. You're very sweet. Have you got some glasses? Got some glasses? So far, he's had good relations with Rachel and thinks he could have arranged for the launch to be from the farm itself. I wanted to speak to the developers because I don't want to break that communication line. Just see how well those hold in there for the minute. And if they'd approached me earlier, I think we might have been able to put it up on an actual position of a turbine. Mike Hume has always been in two minds about the wind farm. His property is one of the ones which will lie close to the turbines. Looking from here, they're going to come round from there, sweeping through an arc of about 120 degrees. He's most concerned about noise that he fears could come from the turbines. Mike and his wife Bash came to Devon for the peace and quiet. She grows the produce, and he runs a specialist car maintenance business. Everything they have is tied up in their property. They came to seek a different sort of life before green became fashionable. It was January 1975, and we'd been looking for somewhere like this. Well, we'd been looking for about two years, haven't we? Two I years. suppose. We were looking to really develop something we could use as a sort of demonstration that you didn't have to live a, a sort of high consumer, mm. high speed lifestyle. I mean, we were going to have our own me methane digester. Yeah, I mean, um, we were even going to have a wind turbine. Mike and Bash, in theory, then, are sympathetic to the wind farm, even though the nearest turbine will be just over a kilometre away. Good morning. But the action group are intent on direct protest. And it appears to me at this point it's becoming a mudslinging match. Oh, we've got life. Go. Yeah, lovely. Get to the end. Can you believe it? Okay. It does upset me that there are a lot of mainly outsiders that are heavily against it. They want the electric, but they don't want it in their back garden. 331 feet. So who'd like one of these in their garden? Only three turbines currently exist in Devon. They've been built by another developer. They're at Bradworthy, about 30 miles from Martin's farm. Ah, oh, brilliant. I think they're marvellous things. To meet government targets, Devon has to plan for 151 megawatts of renewable energy by 2010. So far, all they have coming from onshore wind is three megawatts. You seem genuinely by them. Yeah, I am. Yeah, genuinely. Martin's keen on renewable energy, and he knows he's going to do well out of it too. you really got to strain your ears to hear them. Rest say they'll put £27,000 yearly into a community fund. Martin can't reveal how much he'll make, but in its 25-year lifespan, the wind farm will almost certainly make Martin a millionaire. That's Bradworthy. That's Bradworthy, yeah. Gosh, it's a house so close. Mike and Bash are going to listen to the turbines. There's no question, is there? Anyone who says they can't hear that has got to be hard of hearing. The camera microphone may be enhancing the turbine noise, but Mike's worried and he's hearing it direct so they move further back to listen. That's quite annoying. A -dum, a -dum, a -dum. That really is an intrusion in terms of we've got that for the rest of our lives. To have words with Rachel. It's much louder than <laughs> I thought it would be. <laughs> How'd you get round? Is it this way? OK. This is where you sit. Certainly full on view for her, isn't it? Before leaving, Mike and Bash decide to call and announce at the house next to the turbines. It's all right, it's their feet. Hello. Oh, look! Oh. Oh, hi. 
I mean, we've been up round and right next yeah. to them. Yeah. And they are quite noisy. On the whole, they seem to sound like a plane going overhead. Yeah. But when at night, they get louder. And that's like, almost like a helicopter. So if you went outside at night, would you hear You'd them? You'd hear them. You would hear them quite woof, distinctly. Woof, woof, woof. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, you shouldn't really be feeding them. Have you, are you finding it a bit overwhelming, a bit disturbing? I hate it. Right. So I'm not going to be happy about it. Sure. Uh, I won't say it particularly disturbs me because I don't spend a lot of time at this mm. time of year outside. Right. But the moment I go oh. outside, and I've got to be outside. I've you know, we are really trying to find something that, that's going to reassure us that it's going to be OK. That, that we're going to be OK, really. Well, we'll be OK, you know. We've got no, to put no, up with a bit it's... of noise. It's not be, just that, is it? It's, put up with a constant the, beat. Devaluing the property. Well, that's the biggest... Question mark. That, that's a big, big, big effect. You know, something we've worked for for so long. What was that? There it is. You know, without a doubt, they are taking something away from us. And not really with our permission. They're nicking our tranquility. They're stealing it, you know. It's highway robbery. Really? Bottom line? To talk about their worries, Mike and Bash have invited Rachel over to see them. Are you filming already, Ollie? Yes, filming. Oh. <laughs> Well, here we go. Wind farm developer bribing local with raspberries. <laughs> God, they've just put it out for us, especially. I don't believe that. <laughs> and then when we're faced with what we're being faced with here, does any of this make sense? Does it make sense for you to be building 10 turbines over there and them to be increasing extra airport by 2 million people? No, that really Where is the logic sense. in that, for God's sake? No, it doesn't make sense. You know, it just amazes me, you know. I mean, that's why we hide away down at the bottom of this lane. I would plead with you to go and listen at, at Bradworthy, because I'm, I really, either I'm going off my tree, or I'm, my, I'm, I'm, I'm really not trying to exaggerate it, you know, that's how it is. So if it's up to that point... Noise isn't Rachel's only problem. One of the four landowners involved has pulled out. Good news for Martin Tucker, He'll now get an extra turbine on his land and more money. <laughs> well, five's better than four in anybody's math. So, yeah, it's got to be an advantage, exactly. I'm pretty sure. Mike should be pleased that the turbines are not going to be so close. But he's been back to Bradworthy with Rachel and he is still not convinced. I mean, I got the impression Rachel was a bit surprised when she heard the noise at Bradworthy, at the distances we were at. But she seems confident they can design the, the wind farm here such that we won't get the noise. It seems to me if there's going to be noise, there's going to be noise. All right, yes, good afternoon. Rachel's got a meeting at company headquarters just outside London. It's from here that Res Design and Bill wind farms all over the world. She has to get sign off on the rejigged plans for the Devon site. Yeah, as you know, we've been through quite a lot of different designs, ranging from sort of 19 smaller ones, but then we've quite early on decided to go for the bigger turbines. Mm -hmm. The number of turbines has been reduced. Partly because we had a landowner who decided not to go ahead. Actually, nine 80 metre towers gives just as much, if not more, energy than 10 60 metres, so... The towers, though, have been raised by 20 metres. To blade tip, each will now be 120 metres high, more than twice the height of Nelson's column. It does have a level of, of support, although it's quite uh, vociferous anti-minority, um, I would guess. You're doing quite a lot of work to, um, on community relations. So, right project, right place, let's submit it for planning and hopefully we'll get a consent in a few months' time. So. Okay. That's about it, really, isn't it? Yeah. But it's too early to celebrate. Yeah. Over the next few weeks, Rachel's life is likely to become increasingly uncomfortable. In Denbrook, the news that the turbines would be 20 metres taller kicks off a new war of words. John Shields is the action group's Mr. Fix-It. He lives very close to the site, 
and he's Martin Tucker's cousin. I had a discussion with him in the pub about it. A bit awkward, no? He was adamant that I would do it for the money if I was offered the money. And I said, I don't want to get out of bed and look at those things in the morning, and I can't believe you do. I still haven't met anybody come up and say to me it's a bad idea. Hi, Christine, how are you? It's fairly open here. I'll do you four on the hedge. They come in pairs. So you've got the, the save the valley and the say no. People don't wake up to the idea, it's going to be too late. In fact, there are a lot of NIMBYs, in my opinion. When the Bradworthy wind turbines were on, I bet none of these were down there. They couldn't care at all. It's only because it's in their backyard. Everybody's going to do their bit, today. I don't mind. There's a lot of people have moved into the area, and they seem to be against anything and everything that uh, we've been doing over the last centuries, which is spoiling our towns. I'm going to have to emigrate now, aren't I? <laughs> Do I care? <laughs> no way is it a valley. You know, where they're suggesting there is a place called Denbrook Valley, no way. That worries me more than people putting up signs, because that's led me the opportunity now to, for, for me to put up a sign, which um, we've had a lot of good feedback from. So a lot of people will stop here and uh, have a good look at it. There goes somebody driving by now. Job done. Next day, down at Mike Hume's, a package has arrived. Did you know Rachel was going to send it? It was obvious what it was when it arrived, because it was in a big res envelope. Rachel sent new photo montages of how the nine turbines will look from Mike's house. Well, at least we've only got four that are conflicting with each other. It could have been worse, but I've got no say in it, I suppose. At the end of the day, what do, what do, I, what do we matter in the scheme of things? It's not a question of doing the best thing for the environment. The best thing for the environment is people to stop using vast amounts of energy. We've already lost quite considerably. You know, we've lost the sale of our house which was a major part of our plans for the next few years. <laughs> Save for the bell. Ah, guess who this is? Cool. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> was it all right? Before putting in the planning application, Rachel needs to tie up the contracts with the landowners. So I'll speak to you, you know, after two o'clock or something. Cheers, Rachel. It's, you know, pretty, pretty imminent, really. Well, very imminent. Very imminent. <laughs> so it looks like, it, you know, we could be doing it tomorrow then. Lovely, how exciting. Eventually, Rachel's close to finalising the contracts. Everything's done, everything's ready, all the environmental statements, all the drawings are ready. I've got a copy in my bag here to show Mike. Hello, Mike. Hi. Hello, Rachel. How are you? Sorry, so any day now, we're going to be putting in the planning application. Really? I'm hoping sort of to get a call on my phone, which is in the car. So this is what we'll be submitting. Mm. That's the environmental statement. So that's all the text. Visuals, visual yeah. assessment, landscape assessment, hydrology, ecology, archaeology, shadow flicker, noise, everything. I've got to pick my children up at some point, and I've got to take this with me. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Better have a look at them. You probably wouldn't say it now, but I can remember in the early days you saying, well, you know, maybe you ought to be feeling good because there's going to be a wind farm there and you're doing your bit for the, <laughs> for the world. Or, you know, that doesn't, that really doesn't go down too well. <laughs> when you've had 30 years of peace and quiet and suddenly you, you realise that that's going to be changed. Yeah. to some extent. Rachel has some news for Mike about his peace and quiet. Some months before, he'd given Rez permission to place a microphone at his property to record background noise levels. The higher the background noise, the noisier the turbines are allowed to be. They're in for a shock. You'd be surprised, Mike, that the noise here is, noise, is noisier than at Broad Nimit. It's noisier than at Broad Nimit. So we measured higher levels here than we did at Broad Nimit. What, of ambient? Yep, background noise. So it's not the quietest place at all. <laughs> You've used the, the higher noise are, levels for us. We want the ones we measured here. But those, I mean, but so it's, am it's I really going to be able to see to derive, the ones? It can derive the... Am I going to be able to see the ones we that you measured If we were to use ones here? from Broad Nimit here, yeah. and not the one, not Mike the one. and Bash are certainly worried about noise now. 
tell you it's such a short visit. Yeah. Hoping to go into planning very soon. I'll let you know. Hopefully, when I get back in the car, there might be a message mm. saying, OK. But I really just hate having to leave when there's still so much to say. And it feels really rude as well. But I think he makes a good point that, you know, he doesn't feel like he's totally against it and he doesn't feel like he's totally for it either. You know, and I want to make it work and I don't want people to be against it. I want everyone to love wind farms. And if they can find a way of making them love wind farms then and welcome them and then not to be protesters, then that would be great. The next day is the moment Rachel's been waiting for. It's West Devon Borough Council offices in Oakhampton. The contracts with the landowners have at last been agreed. So, we've got a big box of planning applications oh, here. It just needs to oh, be right. signed there and dated, if you could just... Yep. Res have already spent £300,000 in development costs, and there's a charge for the planning application too. OK. And um, check for 50,000, 50, please. <laughs> I know. I was quite tempted to go shopping earlier. <laughs> Our council department said, make yes. sure we get received. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> so, it will now take six weeks before the final planning meeting. Six weeks in which the war between developers and protesters is bound to escalate. All right, there thanks. We go. Thank you very much. <laughs> the following morning, Rachel's out delivering copies of the environmental statement to post offices so that the public can have access to it. She then drives past the wind farm site. What do you think of the signs? It's a fair enough form of protest. I'm quite surprised they didn't do it sooner, really. Now, there's a nice sign. Now, did you help Martin with his, his sign? That's a, a rest thing. Yeah. Did, did, Rez, did Rez pay for it? Yeah, we gave him the sign. But he wanted a sign. He said, can you make me one, Rachel? Yeah, I didn't make it personally. I didn't sew it with my bare hands. The signs soon become the source of trouble. A week later, new chair of DB VAG, Maureen Thompson, has a front page story for the local paper. Overnight, we've had all of our um, signs vandalised. They trespassed as well. Well, they trespassed at the piles as well. They trespassed, yeah, and they trespassed in other places. It was sheep marker spray, yeah, we, yeah, that's what we thought it was. And now Martin Tucker has something to report too. There's no need to go vandalising people's, on people's property. There's just no need for it. That's all right. Now the plans have gone in, now they can see what we intend to to do. It'll be all up to the planners at the end of the day and they'll make their decision. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Lynette Hamilton. I'm the chairman of our parish council. The next evening, Bow Parish Council have called a meeting to give local people a chance to see the plans and make comments. The application is to erect nine wind turbines. Res have already held an exhibition and Rachel has attended public meetings. She's even canvassed door to door. Well, we sent out these leaflets last week. You didn't did leave. you get? We yeah. Didn't leave. Way to go. So yeah. I'm working on the good idea. Oh, good. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Quite happy. Yeah. Perfectly happy. Yeah. They are a bit of a blot on the landscape mm. now, aren't they? Yes, and, so. and another thing, somebody's making some money out of it. So and it ain't us, kid. No. I've actually got no <laughs> objection <laughs> to it. And you can't keep using up all the resources, the coal and the oil. Yeah. No concerns. No. I'm sort of on the fence about this. I mean, I don't yeah. think it's a good thing. But tonight's meeting will be a difficult time for her. And to hear this constant drone night and day, but I would have to move out of the village. I'd like to continue the point about the low frequency noise. To me, this is vandalising one of the most precious environments that we've still got in this country. We simply cannot believe that this application <laughs> is seriously being made. I'd like to propose a vote that we are against wind turbines. I knew all those people in there. Second that. The community in Bow has not turned out in force against it. It's the same face as the so core of DB Bag. What I would wish for is that loads and loads of supporters came along as well, and but they don't. So why not? Where are they? Because it's where are they? Well, they're probably just sitting at home looking after their kids, hard day at work. You know, just normal people. 
One person at the meeting still prepared to be open-minded is Mike Hume. I mean, I'm sort of reserving my position to some extent because I felt all the way along I wanted to try and look at both sides of the situation. The owners of that company, whoever they may be, are in business, as you rightly said at the beginning, to make money, the same as you or I would be. Of course. Of course. They are not in so, it so, so, for the good of the earth. But when the lights go out and when we've got, you know, we've got serious global warming issue going on at the moment, what happened in the Ice Age, Mike? I don't think we can start getting into that. It's if cyclical. we look at what's happening, it's cyclical. well, if you believe that, basically we have to agree to disagree. Yeah. In my opinion, anyway, without a doubt, CO2 emissions are contributing significantly to this global warming issue. And if we don't do something about it, we are going to leave a dreadful legacy for the next generation. Can I just talk to you about the wind farm for a couple of minutes? I don't agree with that. Good, that's what I was really... The objectors now have less than two weeks to make submissions to the council. They decide to ask the public what they think. We, you're objecting for the following reasons. Detrimental to the landscape. Yeah. Impact of noise and flicker on local people. On Tucker's farm, where the res anemometer is collecting wind speed data, there's been more direct protest. I had a right -o go at this. Obviously done with a pair of wire cutters. I've spoken to one or two people from the action group. They assured me it was nothing to do with them, and I do believe them, and they were appalled by it as well. I hope they don't try it again, because I'd hate to be out here if I caught them. Would you be prepared to sign a letter of objection? No. That's fine, that's fine. We should, we should be using wave power, shouldn't we? We totally agree with you. Mike Hume's business is at a standstill. He's making a detailed objection, and it isn't finished yet. It's long. I mean, I've barely started, mate. He's concerned about noise, that he will sort of suffer as a result of noise from the wind farm. He wouldn't believe how much work is in there, mate. Our predictions are saying that he won't. All income in here. All income. Eventually, by the deadline, the action group hand in 3,000 signed objections. They are also submitting a detailed objection to what they claim was the wind farm's impact on landscape, noise, tourism and wildlife, and its limited generation of energy. But Mike's missed the deadline. He's been trying to get the background noise data he claims Res promised him. So far, he has only seen what's in their environmental assessment and not the raw data. This is why I want to talk to Rachel. I want to get to the bottom of it, but I can't get I can't get her to talk to me about it anymore. We give him the data, he's going to ask us how to interpret it, you know, what to do with it, how to average it, and all these things which really, unless you, you know, got a degree in acoustics, it's quite difficult to do. So far, we've got 402 objections, 31 support, and these are the ones that were handed in today. What about if people hand things in later on? What happens then? It's only up until the closing date is the end of today, and then we would have to speak to the case officer, Jane Green, to find out. Ready to Bash insisted. She thought I looked like a heck. Okay, let's go. So we're we going. It's four days later. Four days after the closing date for objections. I guess like you're handing your homework. Mike's been told he can hand in his submission late. Rachel did make contact with him again. But it would appear she is trying to get the information to me, but possibly someone in a different part of the company is saying, no way. Hello, um, Stephen Gill is around, I think, so if you want to pull the door and come through. OK. Right, Stephen Gill is West Devon's chief planning officer. Are you Mr Gill? <laughs> I am. Ah, I'm Mike Hume. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm from Coxmoor. I'm right. about a thousand metres away from the wind farm. Yes, that's close. It, I was waiting for some information from Rez, and it, I'd get the feeling they've just basically fobbed me off and fobbed well, me off and they it's, won't. It's, it's, now, whether you... it's us you're dealing with now, rather. Sure, than... right. So if you get anything, it's, it's Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I mean, obviously, because, you know, it is obviously very important yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. thanks a lot. OK, pleased to meet you. OK. OK, cheers. Right, cheers. That was quite good, wasn't it? It's just nice that he was willing to give me a bit of time. Is there part of you that sort of wants to sort of get in by the lapels and say, I'll do us a favour and turn it down? Well, no, no, I'm not necessarily looking to have it... I'm still not sure whether it's the right thing to do or not. We have got an energy crisis on the, on the horizon. We've got a, what happened in the ice? a pollution and global warming crisis going on. 
I'm not certainly not convinced this is the best way to address it, but at least it's a, you know, it's a gesture towards it, isn't it? We're going to basically lose periods of quiet for the next 25 years, at least. If it's worthwhile, it's perhaps acceptable to pay that price, but if it's just a token gesture and a, a big money earner for a, an already wealthy company, it's just a sad, sick situation, I think. In four days' time, West Devonborough Council will meet to decide whether to give planning permission for the turbines. Before then, statutory consultees will give their view, including Dartmoor National Park Authority. Today, the authority's members will decide. Alone, they can't stop the development, but they can certainly limit its chances, should they choose to. Right from the start, we've consulted with the planning officers and the National Park. I was fully confident, really, not that they would come out and support it, but what I would have expected of them to say something like no comment. But they may do, and the problem is I'm not allowed to speak. To the delight of the objectors, the Dartmoor Authority members vote not to support the wind farm. I think there were three voted for, a lot voted against, and a few abstained, so... The very landscape they're trying to protect is the one that's going to be affected by climate change the most, so this technology is about protecting landscapes and ecology and habitat. How was Rachel this morning? I she was disappointed. I'm sure she was disappointed. You know, if they win the day, perhaps they'll think she's done a wonderful job. But we haven't lost the battle yet. We're still in the throes. West Devon Council offices. Rachel's come for the first meeting of the West Devon Council Planning Committee that will decide whether or not to grant the planning permission. Some of the objectors are there too. The planning committee consists of nine elected councillors and the chairman, councillor Roger Matthew. Right, good morning members, ladies and gentlemen. The witching hour is upon us. The recommendation here is for a site inspection. Jane. I'm advised that both the applicants and the Denbrook Valley Action Group are willing to fly balloons, weather permitting. I think without much further ado, Councillor Darts, you, you minded to move a site inspection? Yes, I'd be quite uh, happy to move a site inspection. Uh, Chairman, I feel that it's the fairest way <clears throat> for members to go on site and see it for themselves. See you right, Ken. So the councillors can judge the height of the turbines, John Shields is launching a protester's balloon from land near his cousin Martin Tucker's farm. Rachel's brought in a team of her own experts. We put one through your handle here. The protesters are making doubly certain their balloon can be seen clearly. OK, let go. Let go, Jill. Yeah, it's looking good. Right. What's he doing there? Yes, what's he doing there? That's the ante. OK. Stop away! Uh, what did you do, that one? Look, they've got a white balloon to match the clouds. Would you believe it? God, that's horrendous. If you were one of the councillors and you're elderly and your eyesight isn't that sharp, are you going to immediately pinpoint that when you're up the other side of the site, two or three miles away? It's going to be very hard for them to see. Let's not spend too long because I think it's pretty clear. The councillors will view the site from all the agreed viewpoints shown in Res photo montages. Everybody got the balloons. Yeah, yes. I believe that to be the applicants to balloons. Yeah. The lower oh, of which would be an 80 metre, which is a hub yeah. height, uh, and the higher one would be 120 yeah. metres. Right, yeah. have, yeah. have you all got that? Now, are there any questions for Jane at this point on points of policy or fact? We don't discuss the outcomes. I just remind people. Along the way, parish councillors are allowed to address the site meeting. It's not being proven that these turbines will produce sufficient energy and to think what that those turbines will take away from the lovely view from Dartmoor to Axmoor, it's going to be a crying shame to spoil that outlook. They are, Chairman. Thank you very much.
morning, David. Good morning, Chairman. How are you? There is, Chairman, a tremendous uh, difference between the hub height and the and it's quite a big machine. Yes. Have a look at the photograph. Pass it round. Yeah. We're, we're happy with that. Yes. Thank is you. everyone content? No, never content with this. Oh. I'm sorry, Chairman. I know you. I know. Site inspection. You can tell me all about that at committee. Please. I'll talk about the government then. Well, you can, you can you can you can invade as much as you want then, but please not mines. now because it really isn't a public meeting. <laughs> Can we pull it all together, please? Because we're running short of time. You only hope the blinking Sergeant Major knows the way. <laughs> In the interests of uh, pressing on, what I want to do now, I want to take the Sprayton Parish Council view and then I'll take the ward member view. Virtually 100% against on visual impact. <clears throat> it's uh, inconsistent with other planning policies, uh, noise, all the other issues, but mainly the visual impact, and we are very much against it. I think that's all I need to say. <laughs> Can I Thank add anything to that, if possible? Uh, being no, a no, no, I'm sorry, you well, can't sorry, say it's, it's not a public meeting. It's, it's, it's so. for councillors, it's not a public meeting, it can't be. Well, uh, but grand, we do so not... I just thought I'd make myself clear. Uh, OK, so, that's fine. That's well, opinion. you come you come along to the meeting and you will hear how we deal with the determination on Tuesday week, OK? All aboard. All aboard, All those aboard. that are coming aboard, otherwise you will miss your lunch and have to walk home. In 12 days at the final planning meeting, the councillors will have to vote. We had two balloons under each other. All right. Before then, though, Chief Planning Officer Stephen Gill, his team and consultees, meet to draw up recommendations to help the councillors make their decision. They have to get it right, as the decision is open to public scrutiny and could result in legal action. Case Officer Jane Green has prepared the draft report. So far, res have refused the council's request to hand over wind speed data they've recorded. They say it is commercially sensitive. But council and objectors are both questioning just how much electricity the wind farm will really generate. Denbrook Valley Action Group, outputs and benefits are not quantified or verified. And there's a issue with the wind speeds on them. It seems that the output has been calculated using national figures rather than site-specific wind speed data. Res claim that it will provide enough power for between 10 and 13,000 homes. But without the site-specific data, the council are reduced to using estimates from a wind atlas. If you use the figures on the wind speed atlas, it does suggest that the applicants have made some people overestimate. Dave, landscape, it's not just totally subjective. We've got this, no, no, this, this evidence that's a the, uh, the, the, the landscape the, the character zone. The landscape zone. is characterised as a detailed assessment of that. Yeah. So we know what that is and right. we know how that's going to be right. affected. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm grateful for you coming because it's been it's been quite difficult for us. I think there's a lot of issues. There's the issues meeting lasts here. for several hours. Finally, a decision is made. It's been it's been tricky, and it's still very much, to my mind, um, you know, not absolutely clear cut. Mm -hmm. But I think we've got it right. I think we can defend it. Okay, well, if we're all comfortable, thanks very much indeed, Good everyone. Morning, The planning officer's recommendations are due to be posted on the council's website. If this were to go ahead, the application, what would that mean to you? If this was to go ahead, yeah, it would be wonderful, it would be a life's achievement, it would be fantastic. Because I live here as well, so I'd see that wind farm regularly. Jenny Rosser, one of the objectors committee members, also tries to find out what the decision is. Hello Maureen, it's Jenny here. Hello. Um, I am um, having difficulty getting into the West Devon Borough Council website. I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking. Oh, oh I think it might be here. It's here, it's here. Oh, great. <laughs> Is it good, bad or indifferent? You know, it's just not telling me in one go. Blah, blah, blah. What, what <gasps> Terrific! I will refuse. 
On what grounds? For the following reasons. Visual impact. I can't read it. The council's report recommends refusal, chiefly because of the wind farm's visual impact on the landscape and its possible effect on the site's historic and archaeological environment. It also notes that Resi's claims for the amount of electricity it would generate are not adequately substantiated. I've just got to try and put my hands together so I can go and pick up the kids in a minute. Oh, that's really good news. An outright refusal, apparently. I'm on lots of very solid grounds. That's really terrific. They don't believe it will, you know, generate any electricity, which is just mad. Rez's policy of not releasing first noise data and now wind data has made people suspicious. But anything could still happen. This is an episode in the saga. I certainly don't see it being the end of the line. That just because they've been recommended to refuse doesn't mean so they have to refuse it. The next day, Rachel has read the full report and wants to tackle the council on its recommendations. I would really like to have a face-to-face -face meeting to have these things explained, you know, before we get into the sort of uh, land of lawyers. If there is reasonable justification for what they're saying and why they haven't put certain comments in, then bring it on, let's hear what it is. What more do you want us to do? Well, ideally I'd like that report not, as it stands now not to be in the public domain because members but it is. and other people will be but reading it. Is, it. Unless you've got a, <laughs> we, can't, we can't go back in time. It's, it can be changed. It's, it's, we're, we've got no problem with this. This is what we thought at the time of writing. You've given us something since. Fine. And what you have given us is this. A letter from Rachel had not arrived in time for the council's report. I get it to in the morning. It argued that even using the wind speed atlas figures, the energy yield from the wind farm would match Resi's target of supplying between 10 and 13,000 homes. I'm not allowed to release the site data into the public domain, but given what you say yourself, that 6.4 to 6.8 metres per second is a reasonable wind speed, the capacity factor comes out at 28.5%, and that's what that letter explains. Yes, but we didn't and have this. We didn't, we didn't have, have this at the time we wrote the report. You won't release the site data previously. You're no, but that is only basic won't. maths. Right, but, 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 no, it's but not. You okay, but you we would done. release it to you in confidence and we would right. release it to an independent technical expert, but we will not release it into the public domain, no, because it causes too much right. hassle. Right. Now, he was really quite defensive and sort of saying, you know, we're not biased, it's not a biased report, blah, blah, blah. You know, look, me reading the report, I work in this, I've been doing this for two years and I read it and I. I don't see the positive comments from the environment you see, I don't see the positive comments from English nature. I, you know, see questions about low frequency noise effects and strobe effects, which are ludicrous, loony things left hanging in the air. I was doing my nicest sort of, you know, smile to try and, you know, keep everything calm. And I'm... What did you achieve from that? Um, well, I don't think they're going to defer it. I'm pretty sure now that they're just going to and object to it. The next day, and things could get even worse for Rachel. Devon County Council are also consultees. She goes to see if they will be supporting West Devon's recommended refusal. Their vote goes against her too. I imagine she's not feeling too happy. We've got some email which I think we need to explore with Jane in a moment because there are some points of detail. She is going on in her second substantive paragraph about the energy yield. Um, presumably you will update members on that. I have left a copy of their calculations in both members' rooms if anyone right. wants to get into the detail <coughs> of it. But so it's, yeah, it's readily accessible. Uh, but I'd invite members just to disregard the um, latter part of that paragraph. I think that's the correct and, and fair thing to do. Does it materially affect the balance of your recommendation? No, it doesn't, Chairman. And it, 
doesn't answer certain questions about the site specifics of the wind, which they're still refusing to release. In 24 hours, along with the other main parties, Rachel will be allowed a three-minute speech at the final planning committee meeting. She's drafting it with her res PR colleague. They only get three minutes as well. Mm. So I think our argument should be, yes, it will be visible, but on balance, the benefits of this project far outweigh any of those, those concerns. Denbrook should be seen as an opportunity to do something about climate change. Though. Why don't they Can do a poll of the local area then? Don't challenge them to do a poll. <laughs> sure, it will come out favourably. What it's really coming down to is visual, visual effect. Do you think there's anything that you can do tomorrow to try and make a difference? If we can try and make them see that they've got this opportunity, this good opportunity to, to actually do something positive, but they have to have the courage to do it. It's all about courage to make that decision. Go. Hello, I'm Rachel Ruffle, one of Wendy's assistants, project oh. manager <laughs> for the Big Proposal. I also Res technical director Chris Shears, down from head office, will share the three minutes with Rachel. I'm trying to say to these guys, look, you are important people. Puff their chests out a bit. You know, you, you, you have the ability to take this decision, actually, and it's a very important decision in the context of climate change and global warming, energy security, blah, blah, blah. You can either put your head in the sand or you can take a positive decision that will um, allow the project to proceed in a timely fashion rather than everyone go through the pain of a public inquiry and all the taxpayers' money that that's going to take. Okay, Keith, okay, so I'll direct them down. The next stage in the future of the Denbrook turbines is about to be decided. Right, the chairman of the committee, Carry on, Mrs. Chauffeur. Carry on. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> Morning. Uh, I thought it best to be driven this morning. Yes, I'm the chauffeur. <laughs> It's all about location, yes. isn't it? It's all, well, it's all about material planning considerations, yes. Margaret, as always. <laughs> Morning, gentlemen. Oh, that's... Rachel has argued forcefully over the last few days that her company's energy estimates for the wind farm are not exaggerated. But Res still haven't released either the wind data or the background noise data. Good morning, members. But still, anything could happen. The councillors don't have to accept the recommendations of the officers. What a morning for my voice to start playing up. But uh, you'll just have to <coughs> strain to hear me. Starting on page 22, Denbrook, Jane. The Environment Agency have written... Responding to Rachel's pressure, Jane Green briefs the meeting on a number of organisations who have no objection to the building of the wind farm. Broadly happy with the proposed methodology. I also have a letter from the applicants, which unfortunately arrived just after the um, report was um, printed off. She also confirms that wind speeds from the Wind Atlas are consistent with Res's predicted energy yield. So I would invite you to disregard the latter half of the second paragraph on page 33 of the report, stating this is of concern. Very comprehensive, if I may say so. The chief planning officer then gives the key reasons why he is recommending that council members vote to refuse planning permission. And it's the combination of that sheer scale and the high quality landscape character that causes this particular proposal to have a significant adverse impact in officers' view, and one that unfortunately outweighs what we recognise as the many benefits. We therefore feel that the proposal is unacceptable, and we feel it's unacceptable in policy terms. That brings us to the uh, public speakers. Tony has a useful egg timer, Ms. Ruffle. Do you mind if we split it one and a half minutes? I'll let you do it, but I'd rather Thank you'd you. ask me before. I did actually ask the young um, clerk, uh, yeah. Oh, well, they didn't. We tried it once before. It doesn't work terribly well. Um, up to you. Up to you. Tony will start his egg timer. No statutory bodies have raised concerns on noise, ecology, wildlife, aviation or hydrology. A Murray poll in 2004 said 71% of rural residents in Devon would be pleased to see a wind farm in their area. It comes <coughs> down to a balance. You should commission a Murray poll 
um, of the local residents and ask them the question, what would they prefer, to do nothing in the face of um, climate change or to have a small change, temporary change in the landscape for clean, green and local power? Um, Chairman, councillors, your, your officers have got it wrong, unfortunately. More precisely, they have got the balance wrong between the need to develop renewable energy sources and the weight to be ascribed to a well-designed, well-thought-through wind farm in an undesignated landscape. Wind farms like Denbrook become more essential each day. Clean energy at the point of use, simple and secure, enough power for 50% of the homes of West Devon. So I would ask you today to think very carefully about this decision, be bold, strike the right balance and support this wind farm. Just, just scraped in under the wire. Okay, thank you very much. I will now open the issue to members for debate. From Mitten Cross and from Nichols Nimmet, I looked across miles and miles of beautiful, unspoiled countryside. Then I consulted the photo montage to see these imposing structures which would completely change our wonderful Devon landscape. And for the reason of the immense visual impact, I shall be voting to support the officer's recommendation. I am still very undecided, even at this stage. I am still not wholly convinced that we should be refusing this. The only place I really had feelings was in Bow at the playing fields and in Strawberry Fields from the gardens that we saw then. The impact for those people will be huge. I'm not ambivalent about wind mills, wind turbines, etc. But I don't passionately dislike them either. I shall await Councillor Waterhouse's comments before I even make my mind up because I am still very unsure. <coughs> so. Think of the future. What are our great-grandchildren? I'm a great-grandfather, by the way. It'll be the second time in May. <laughs> what are our great-grandchildren going to say about the idiots who allowed this to go ahead? Mm. Whether in government or whether in local council. And I, actually, I made a note the other day, and I'm going to read that to you, Chairman. If this House application goes to appeal and they win, then all West Devon borough councillors must become militant and block all roads to the site. <laughs> no doubt there will be help from the 3,000 plus objectors to the proposed site blockage. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hughes. West Devon Borough Council's Home Guard. <laughs> Do you want to come in now, Mrs Waterhouse? I have found it very, very difficult to come to a conclusion. I am not going to support the officer's recommendation on this occasion. Um, I am going to concentrate on trying to persuade people that if you look at these wind turbines, they are, in their own right, beautiful objects, exploiting, <coughs> exploiting the materials of which they are made. They are contributing to our continuing well-being. And if, in the end, as uh, Mrs Govia says, we don't like them, we can take them down. I want to try and pull the threads together, and what I'm, I'm going to try and do that now. I also want to add a little bit of balance, I think, but, and pull us on to the planning issues, and the planning issues are what we're going to have to focus on. And then I'll ask uh, uh, the mover, Councillor Darch, to reply to the debate, and we'll, we'll get a vote going. <coughs> yes, I am entitled to my own view, and I am entitled to tell you, because I'm a member of the committee as well as its chairman, so it's time I came off the fence. I shall be supporting the recommendation, but I want to explain why. Because I shall do so rather sadly. Actually, very sadly. Um, like Mrs Waterhouse, I don't actually object to wind turbines. I can find a form fitted to function in them which I find elegant, and I think you can learn to love them. But there is an issue of scale. And when you actually stand in a, in a gateway in the Denbrook Valley and you look out over it and you relate the photographs, which incidentally are excellent, um, uh, and you relate those to what you can see on the ground and you look at the balloons, you don't actually even have to look at the balloons because you can, you can pick it up from the photograph. I mean, this is huge. These machines are huge. To get it into proportion, however, they're only two-thirds uh, of the height of the North Essery Mast, which is about 640 feet. 
And that's bang in the middle of the National Park in the most prominent location, you see it for scores of miles. And there's a balance to be drawn here. But of course, you're looking here, not just at one, you're looking at nine. And you're looking at it in a much smaller scale landscape. And that is part of the reason, it's only part of the reason, why the officers came to the conclusion that not only that there was an impact, but it, that it's a significant impact and that it's a detrimental impact. It's a matter of judgment. Whether the scale of this proposal is so great as to justify a refusal. That's the key issue that your officers are bringing in front of you. And that's what you should have in your mind uh, when you vote. The recommendation is as on page 36, to refuse for those reasons. I will see those in favour of that motion, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those against. One, two, three. That is carried. The application is refused. Uh, and we will now break for... I think it would be fair to break for 20 minutes because I expect uh, some people might want to interview some members and now's the time to do it. <laughs> but I think had the scale been better related, you might have stood a better chance. Yeah, and well, we'll take that away I, I and think about it. But it, it was the right decision, I'm afraid. Yeah, so it was a fine balance. We just said, you know, it's a difficult one. Oh, but you did mention turbulence, didn't you? Sorry? You did mention turbulence. There's a lot of turbulence in this business, that's for sure. Why didn't the council, the planners, say to us, look, this is a big problem with the scale, you know, go back. It's not going to be acceptable. We're going to recommend, you know, we think it's got a severe visual impact. Why has it only come out now? Put your elbows up on it, that's it. I can understand, you know, the people who are objecting to it obviously feel happy. You know, just like, what are you celebrating? The fact that you're not doing anything, you know, you're not taking responsibility for your own power. Anybody want to buy some signs? I think it's going to go on. Farmer Tucker, he's not going to let go, is he? As long as you haven't spent the dream, you're all right. And... Believe me, I haven't. <laughs> it is quite a symbolic moment, don't you think? <laughs> I wonder if Rez are going to go for appeal. So, so all I would ask you then is just tell me what noise level I'm going to receive, what emission level I'm going to receive. It's a big thing for me, this noise thing. It's a really big thing. And I've spent, you know, more hours and I've spent talking to you about it than I have to sure. do. But then I'm probably the only one who's really focused in on that. And if we decide we're going to go to appeal, then I'll revisit it. Sorry, so, Jerry, I've got to take them to the train station. <laughs> yes. Well, well, we'll battle well on. Well done that's today. Us. Well done today. Yes. After months of fighting, the battle for Denbrook is nowhere near finished yet. So I'm close to the press release announcing our decision to appeal West Devon Borough Council's review. So I'll now begin by formally opening the inquiry. Their high-powered barristers will just tear me to shreds. If you don't like the answer, you can come back afterwards. Yes. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The data from the noise measurements not being made available. This begs the question as to whether information has been purposefully withheld. What on earth? Are we sacrificing this beautiful environment for? You won't tell us.